They arrived here by train August 31st, 1899. Five Benedictine sisters with only $20 between them. They came to start a school, but what they found was a community in desperate need of help to care for its sick. 115 years later, the, commun the community continues to benefit from those sisters who followed God's call. The fascinating history that built Avera St. Mary's, that's today on Health Matters. Welcome to Health Matters, I'm Amanda Bacon. From beginnings in an abandoned hotel to renovations which continue still today, Avera St. Mary celebrates 115 years of service to Central South Dakota this year. To put that in a little historical perspective for you, what was then St. Mary's Hospital started just 10 years after South Dakota actually became a state and 28 years before Guts and Borglum began work on Mount Rushmore. Well, we have so much history and ministry to share with you today, and we have none better to bring that to us than Karen Gallagher. She is the Vice President of Mission for Avera St. Mary's, returning to our program. Karen, welcome Thank today. Thank you, Amanda. Awesome. We are so glad to have you here. Let's let's talk about, first of all, where, where we're at. This is okay. some place that people typically, visitors to the hospital, will not see, but right. we are in the Heritage Room right. here at Avera St. Mary's. And let's explain to people what sure, that is. Sure, this was a space that formerly was our laboratory years ago and it had been actually used for storage. And Sister Frances Schumacher came to Pierre and she had actually been the lab manager here through 1985 and then was doing other ministries. But she came back and one of the things she started doing was assembling all of our historical items, meaning scrapbooks, photos, medical equipment, all sorts of historical things and has been putting them on display and we call it the heritage room. Right. This is really an archive of yes. our history. Mm -hmm. We have things just from all the years, even from 1899. There's pictures of our first um, sisters that were here. It just goes through all the years, all of our different sponsors, and she's just doing a great job getting this all set up for our, our staff and our community to take a look at our history. Right. This has truly been a labor of love um, mm -hmm. for her. This is this is um, a very St. Mary's is someplace that she feels mm -hmm. very deep ties to, right. and so to come back and do this has really been been a gift for right. us and I think it's very special and meaningful to her. Right, right. Well, let's talk about some of that history. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating 115 years. We're surrounded by 115 right. years of, of history right. here. Um, but let's let's go way back sure. um, to that beginning. Mm -hmm. How did a very St. Mary start? Sure, sure. <laughs> well, we have to go back to 1899. At that time, there was not a hospital, any sort of hospital. There was a doctor in town, but no hospital. And actually, there was a community um, committee that had petitioned different groups of sisters to come to Pierre to start a school and also to start a hospital. And at that time, if you think back what this part of the country was like, it was deemed by a lot of these groups, these different groups of sisters, to be too rough and too wild, and they wanted no part of it, actually. But finally, the education committee in town kind of won out and the Benedictine sisters from the Sacred Heart Monastery in Yankton, South Dakota, agreed to come for one year to start a school. So they ventured up here, and you can imagine those times, right. and they had $20 to between, collectively, between them. yes, right. $20 <laughs> to work with, and they came to this site. It's actually where Mary House sits today. There was an abandoned hotel called the Park Hotel, which had never been finished, and, but it was a three-story building, and they had come to town to start a school. But community members, including the physician in town, knew that the sisters in Yankton ran a hospital. They'd been running that for a couple of years. So they, even though their committee didn't win, they went ahead and brought some of their sick patients or family members. And the sisters just were kind of swept into health care, so to speak. Right. Um, they weren't prepared for that. They were not nurses. They were educators. But one of the things that they're committed to is meet the needs of the times, meet the mm -hmm. needs that they are presented with, and they did both. They ran a school and started a hospital, and, they, and then eventually the school was transferred to the local parish, and they've right. continued um, over this history right. of 115 years that we've had a hospital here. Right. The conditions that they faced upon arrival were uh, less than ideal. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Again, that hotel had been abandoned, so rodents mm -hmm. had overtaken it. It was a mess. 
they had grounds here and they actually were able to start apple orchards and have some cows and have some chickens to be somewhat Mm self-sustaining but so in addition to taking care of patients cleaning things up they had the animals to tend to back in those days and we know no antibiotics no air conditioning no power elevators all the things that we take for granted let alone all the technology we have today they really had a a big job and they did everything they were the housekeepers they were the maintenance people they were the cooks they did the nursing Mm -hmm. so right and from that beginning Things really progress. I mean, mm-hmm. th- this was definitely a need right. that they in were Central meeting here. Central South Dakota, because we were two states now, the right. Dakota Territory had split, and they did ha- take care of patients from a wide g- geographical area, as we do today. Right. But um, the, it did grow to the point mm-hmm. that they needed something brand new in those days right. compared to just that abandoned hotel. So in 1930, the new hospital with 100 beds, and that's actually the building that we're in, right. was constructed. And it was very exciting. When you look back at the newspaper clippings from those mm-hmm. days, uh, it was a very big deal, that 100-bed hospital here in central South Dakota. And it opened just right before the stock market crashed. And so, you know, they, they were able to build it and right. get it open in, in um, 1930, but then it was tough times. Right, right. We talk a lot here, and we hear a lot in the community um, about two physicians in particular, mm-hmm. a Dr. Robinson, who, mm-hmm. like you said, he was the community right. physician who was here, here. prior mm-hmm. to their coming, mm-hmm. um, definitely instrumental right. in everything right. yes. up to this point. Mm-hmm. And he, so he was here practicing um, medicine, but no real support. Right. And the interesting thing about Dr. Robinson is he was actually had an intention of getting further west in his plan. But the railroad brochure was a little bit misleading, is what the story oh. <laughs> said, and the train ended in Pierre. So he was uh-huh. actually thinking he was going further west, but this is as far we as we were the end get. of the road. <laughs> we were the end of the road, and we ended up mm-hmm. staying here and practicing. But very fortunate for the people here at that time to have care of a physician, and right. and then he was instrumental in helping the sisters and, and kind of forcing the sisters to take on this ministry. Right, right. After that, we also hear an- another name that we still hear on our high school and sure. all <laughs> and yeah. all kinds of places. Mm-hmm. But but T. F. Ritz, right. Um, right. he was also an instrumental mm-hmm. piece of the medical history right. of and our we'll community. We'll see things in this room mm-hmm. that relate back to those times and those physicians mm-hmm. over the years. Right, right. So kind of a really neat. If if you have some time, mm-hmm. this is a good place to come right. and really. T- if you're a history buff, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, we, we obviously we have the medical history sure. um, that's so important to our community, but we also have um, our our mission. Um, mm-hmm. we, we have changed sponsors right. and owners, if you right. will, several times right. over 115 so. years, but that key piece right. has really remained right. the same. So the, the foundational mi- mission in, in our ministry is to carry out the healing ministry of Jesus. And we've been a Catholic hospital throughout all of these 115 years. As I mentioned, the Benedictine Sisters from the Sacred Heart Convent in Yankton came in 1899, and they continue to operate us and and be the administrators and be the leaders in the different departments throughout the years. And then their actual numbers grew to a point where they needed to start another monastery. And so the Mother of God Monastery, which is now located in Watertown, was started. It was actually first located in Pierre, and there were about 100, 100. 20 members who le- left that Sacred Heart Convent to join the new thing. And that's, right. and Sister Frances was one of those. And we have other sisters in town who are Benedictine sisters from Watertown who were those originally had started with the, with right. the Yankton group. So then from 1960, we were sponsored by the Benedictine sisters from mm-hmm. Watertown. And then we became part of the Catholic Health Initiatives in right. 1996, which was a new, a new entity, a, na- a national, mm-hmm. nationwide Healthcare, but again, we're still part of a Catholic health system. Our right. mission and our purpose has never changed throughout all right. those years. And then in 2013, as you know, we became part right. of the Vera's system and right. uh, more part of a regional network here in, in this right. area. And for our ministry purposes, for our, our sisters, for our sponsors, this had really kind of made it come back full, full circle. circle. <laughs> right, because Avira is co-sponsored by the Yankton, right. the Benedictine Sisters from Yankton, the Sacred Heart 
um, convent, those sisters who first started us, they are now one of our co-sponsors along with the Presentation Sisters from Aberdeen. Right. And there was a day when the sisters were very prevalent here. Like mm -hmm. you said, they, they are the ones who did everything right. um, to right. start with. But yeah. also, like you said, Sister Frances worked mm -hmm. here in the lab. Mm -hmm. um, she was not the exception. No, we, we, our, our staff was... And I guess I'll give a little history uh, myself. I've actually right. worked here since 1986. So when I started that time, there were a number of sisters who were department mm -hmm. leaders and also worked, worked in right. the business office, worked in different capacities, nurses, and then just the numbers have declined, and I think um, most people are familiar with that, and that is why they um, have elected to trust and trust us, mm -hmm. as far as lay people, to continue this ministry into the future. Um, we have sisters at work here, Sister Frances, as I mentioned, we have Sister Marietta, who's uh, in our spiritual care department, mm -hmm. and we have sisters that pray for us every day, and we're very appreciative of that, and Absolutely. maybe serve on our board or serve on other committees, mm -hmm. but not in every department, heads of departments, and even right. in administration, we, we are lay people now doing right. that. Right, but still certainly a very key part of, mm -hmm. of what we do here mm -hmm. and going forward. Um, we talked about this um, building that we're in being the new building right. at one point. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Um, obviously, there have been other new buildings mm -hmm. since, um, and our our renovations, our, right. our work continues. Um, ongoing, yes. And if you um, consider what it, the town was like when they mm -hmm. came, and what we've been able to do on this on this campus in this right. space with the clinic and the hospital now on the north side of Dakota. Right. I mean, it is exciting, and it is a, a beautiful location so close to the right. to the river, so we thank the sisters for picking such right. a nice spot <laughs> exactly. to, to come to. Exactly. Well, we've had a lot to celebrate mm -hmm. um, this mm -hmm. year, and that's one thing that we've really been um, been working to do is to celebrate and, right. and to take kind of our, yeah. our message of our history right. out to the community. Yes. It, it just seemed like a 115 years. It's not maybe as big a milestone as some other ones, but just to take that time to look back and say, oh, wow, 115 years is, is a long time, and to do some celebrating both inside our facility with our employees and then with our community. Right, right. So one thing that you'll see throughout the community, we have some t-shirts, right. and I thought you, I had one here, but I right left it to the, right thank you. you. <laughs> so thank yes, you. our employees so, yeah. have been given. You'll, you'll see some of these around town, um, right. talking about our our 115 years, um, and we've had a little fun um, right. with this. We've, we've asked them to to take photos and submit them to Facebook. So, so you can go to our Facebook page and, and look at some of the many ways mm -hmm. that our employees mm -hmm. are celebrating this. Right. It's been kind yeah. of fun. It's been fun to see what creative things people have done with, with the t-shirts and, right. and have fun with those. And then we've actually reached out into the community as right. well. So we've had our, our celebrations here, but we've also kind of taken a take on that 115 and made some donations in the community to local nonprofits, giving them $1,115. To um, focus on youth has um, is, is been the focus. So St. Joseph's School, which the Benedictine right. Sisters have run in, um, over the years in honor of them, that was our first one back in August. Right. And that was um, Bob Setner, CEO, presented that, and he has presented all of them. Mm -hmm. But it's been a fun way to engage with our community to celebrate our birthday also. Right. And we wanted to invite anybody who might be watching who would like to sure. take a look at this room Absolutely. that we can just run the name or the phone mm -hmm. number, the name and the phone mm -hmm. number. You'll be calling Sister Frances and, and setting up a time to come and she'd be happy to give a group Absolutely. or individuals a tour. It really is nice to come and have time to spend. Mm -hmm. When we've had open houses for our staff, they can maybe get away at a break, and they say, I could spend a whole afternoon looking through these right. things. I need to come back another day. And, right. and it's, it, it is a, just a wonderful place to reconnect right. with our history and, yeah. and maybe get a laugh at some mm -hmm. pictures from <laughs> um, many years ago. The, right. the women's softball team is what I was looking at from, I think, the 70s and 80s. And, and Those are fantastic. They are fun to look at. And, and Sister Frances can give you history yes, of our softball team as well. She was on the softball well. team She's for many years. So. <laughs> so she she has all the good stories. Yeah, yeah. So if you want, yeah, if, if you'd like to learn more, she is definitely um, mm -hmm. a, a wonderful tour guide and, and a wealth of knowledge for we're fortunate yeah, to have great. that. So yeah. awesome. Well, thank you oh, so much, yeah, Karen, you, for Amanda. taking it's the time. Great. It's it's fun to share a story with yeah. the community yeah. and just and I'm I'm looking forward to all of the many things mm -hmm. to come. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to take a look at the many wonderful things we have on display here, Sister Frances, as we said, is happy to give you a tour. You can call her at 224-3364. That number again, 224-3364.
And if you'd like to see this program again or share it with someone who you think may find it interesting, you can find us online. We're at oahitv.com. Just select the Health Matters link. Of course, you'll find links to this program on the Avera St. Mary's social media sites as well. Also, we always love to hear from you, so you're welcome to shoot us an email if you have something you'd like to see us discuss on the program. You can do that at healthmatters at oahitv.com. And remember, until next time, take care of yourself because your health matters.